Hello, I'm Sean Maloney. And I'm Andrew Swain, and we're fair weather fans. Lovely step, another one. And that completes the humiliation. It wasn't the game, it was a shame for the Aussies. Well, how else should we be feeling after 11 straight Lenners Low series stolen by the Kiwis? You know, I think we've probably had a decade where the game became a little technical and not quite as entertaining as it should have been. Georgia Bells are right down. Look at baby snoring. For a decade, we rugby fans have rested our voices in the stadiums and we've muted our demand for rugby in the media. In fact, many Australians can't even name more than two members in the current Wallaby squad. Eric Beal, Cooper Cronk, see one of them? Cooper Cronk! Cooper Cronk! But it's all about to change. Aussie rugby's beginning its resurgence from the lulls of world number three for shame. And we're following a supporter group keen to cheer it on. <laughs> this episode, we'll be looking at how rugby's media mall has been held up. You will automatically fall behind the biggest news story of the day and the rugby league content. <laughs> Find some inspiration from a source that's entrenched in the game and get a sense for how participation can be a lifelong endeavour. Would that make him 112 years old about now? Dead, oh. <laughs> so what is the sound of one poor clapping? Have Aussie rugby fans lost their voice or are we about to discover the call of the wallaby? Sydney is probably the most fickle rugby market of all. No, I don't think it matters anymore, Swaney. I think rugby's back. Well, in Sydney it might be anyway. Just have a look at the difference a winning team makes to support. I don't think I've ever seen this sort of anticipation for a game, probably since the 03 final. We're at the Super Rugby Final with the Tars hosting the Crusaders. Just two weeks out from the Bledisloe, the Gold Brigade couldn't have hoped for a better setup to gauge the Homebush rugby atmosphere. This is the now it's Beal, flat pass to Hooper! Michael Hooper is straight through. Down there, now it's Slay. And, and what a night it was. Ashley Cooper straight. It's Ashley Cooper! He has got a double! We can get this for the Bledisloe. It's game on. It's just going to be unreal. Unleash the Skelter! I bumped into them on the way here, uh, walking along, and they had this huge Unleash the Skelter sign, and I've looked, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's Mossman Rugby guys. So I had a bit of a chat to them about what they were doing for the Bledisloe, and they said they hadn't bought tickets yet. And they've got 60 guys here. Super keen to get them on board um, to come join the gold mine. Ah, oh, look who we found in the crowd. The Moes have positioned themselves in the same section of the stadium where the Gold Brigade will be for Bledisloe 1. Here come the Crusaders. Now the pressure is on the Waratahs. They fling it out wide. Poor Kernsey. The Tars are ahead 30 to 29 with four on the clock. And it looks like he's going into cardiac arrest. There's the penalty. Slade doesn't miss them from there. Seconds ticking away. McKibben is on there and Foley has to lay it back in from the red and black jumpers. Now Tolu Latu goes to ground. Well, that trip dangerous. They're going to win it though. There's a penalty. Well, it's 45 metres out. It's against Richie McCaw, ironically. You weren't the tackler. So, Bernard Foley. Crowds all starting to stand. These enormous blocks of people getting to their feet already. 45 metres back. Bernard Foley. has got the legs. It's got the legs. The distance. Awesome atmosphere, and it just shows that you know the crowd can get behind the 
our teams, you know, just shout stay tuned. Imagine our national teams. Rugby might be at full volume in Sydney now, but let's go back a couple of months to a very different reaction to a Bernard Foley penalty. And it's taken a while, so a little more breathing space. The Wallabies put on a half century against the French in game one, but I guess this is rugby. One minute you're up, the next you're down. The siren sounds, Wallabies six, France nil. Regardless of what gets written, we showed great character in Britain. Uh, maybe in the past, they're games that maybe we wouldn't have won. So I was, I was pleased that uh, at least we're showing, showing that uh, week to week we can find ways to win. You know, interesting, because it copped a lot of criticism. The first game, 50 points scored. Everyone loves it. You know, seven tries. Fantastic. But actually, for a rusted-on rugby fan, that Melbourne game was a great game. Um, the difference was the French turned up. The Wallabies hadn't lost, in fact, they hadn't lost for six consecutive matches. And yet, the public already had the gun cocked. How about these comments? No wonder rugby is struggling in Australia. This was barely watchable. Ian calls it utter rubbish. Rugby savant Daveski gives us, I'm happy to blame Mackenzie, that was a dog of a game plan. But the most insightful of all was Jono. Crap crowd, crap playing surface, crap ref, a crap advertisement for rugby. What is the deal with the naysayers in our game? Why are we so keen to bash it at any opportunity? In fairness to the fans, I think their behaviours are probably warranted, right? If we perform well and we entertain, they will come. To be honest, I think over the last decade, we haven't always performed well and we haven't always entertained. And Look, when you're in a brutally competitive sports market, you have to win and you have to entertain. You don't always have to win. If you lose and you play really good rugby, they'll, they'll come and they'll enjoy it. But if you lose and you play boring rugby, you're in a world of pain. The reactions to the second test came off the back of quite a few years with someone at the helm who was never really fully accepted by Australians. The brief of the selection panel was to find the best man for the job and the board considers this appointment has satisfied that objective. In 2007, for the position of national coach, they appointed a Kiwi? Hold on, he was lauded when he came in and he was meant to be the saviour and you can't tell me that you weren't on board after his first game in charge. That's the ball game! 34 points to 19. Yeah, and how many more did he win? Robbie Dean's record against the All Blacks was three wins, 14 losses and one draw. Had we been the victims of the biggest trans-Tasman scam of all time? Surely not. This was probably the hardest thing for an Aussie to ever come to terms with. We were New Zealand's big... Big players. Big players in the biggest clash of our countries, yeah. That's what we were. The heartache after the loss at the hands of the Lions in 2013 was the final nail for the Aussie public. But we've moved on since then. Are we still holding on to those frustrations? Get a mate. Shawnee met up with highly regarded rugby journo Ian Payton to find out why we're still paying for those major losses. And why is rugby buried so deep inside the paper? Um, around June last year when the Lions were in town, didn't you get manage to get a couple of yarns front page, back page, heading into the decider? Is that... Is that yeah, that a absolutely. Time? And it was definitely a rugby moment in the sunshine. And unfortunately, um, it didn't make hay. You know, that's the, the real disappointing thing about losing that series. It was, as an Australian rugby fan, it was disappointing to lose anyway. But as a... Someone in the media, I knew that rugby had a chance to really grab hold of, you know, some neutral fans in that series. And that disappointing loss in the third test probably saw people that watched two, one or two games of rugby a year drift away thinking, oh, you know, the Wallabies suck, don't they? You know, so those are the things. It's really unfair on the, on the Wallabies, but those massive games, um, they have to win and they have to win regularly. And, and when, the, when the code was last ascendant, that's what they were doing. John Eels and, and those boys were winning games. What sort of challenges do you face um, professionally within rugby to help try and bring these guys back into the mainstream? Uh, it depends. You know, some places are better than others. Um, some places really get it. The Wallabies is a good, a good environment in terms of 
doing all they can to raise the profile of the sport. So from where you guys sit, yep. who are rugby now competing against in terms of the other sports for coverage in the media? Yeah, well, it, it's gone from a point where rugby could compete. You know, 10, 12 years ago, rugby could compete with league. You know, it valued itself as the second biggest code. League is king, you know, and the, the TV deals tell us that, that the market wants league ahead of the rest of us. So if rugby is not the biggest news story of the day, you will automatically fall behind the biggest news story of the day and the rugby league content. Yeah. So you're already going back, you're starting at page eight, and pay, whatever, page eight is your new back page for the rest of the sport. I think slowly rugby is sort of aware of that, that there is a real fight on for those lower positions below rugby league or if you're in Melbourne, AFL, so. Do you, th do you think though, do you think that's the case, that coaches are completely across the fact that they need to now be completely Oh, they're not across, no, they're not. They need to be, no, they need no, to be sales, they're on the, you know, it's a day-to-day -day thing. You know, some days you'll get the result you want, you'll, you'll um, get the interview you want. Other days, it's a frustrating silence. So it's, it's cracking through to that other level of the coaches to, to sort of understand yeah, yes, winning a game is important, but if no one's there to watch it or no one's clicking on the TV to watch it, then what's the point? You know, everyone's going to be out of job if you keep on that train of thought. So it's frustrating in that sense. You can't help a code that doesn't want to help itself. Right, Pato, here we go. So back page, Hopper. Yeah. Idris, Hindy, Fletch, Tedesco. We're still going. Tafua, Cahill. Guy who hasn't even reached David the country Villa. yet, David Villa. And now, 16 pages in, a little bit of Falau and some Alofa Alofa. What is happening? Yep. <laughs> AFL. <laughs> Fun for the good guys. Right near the obituary and the betting. And, and, my, and LeBron. Small victory, mate. <laughs> Well, rugby fans, we're on another dodgy mission to move rugby up the sports section. Rugby, page 94, and the back page is what? 112. That's 19 pages back. We've come up with the Australian line out, an ill conceived method of removing unwanted lines from the newspaper. What about that? We've just been inside the news agency. Mate, rugby is 19 pages back from the back page. <laughs> This thing's gonna be working overtime today. It's time to put rugby back on the back page. Let's get to work. Let's do it. G'day, how are you going? Powerball tickets, how do I... Uh... Quick, Swaney, so get in there. Don't want this is our version of smart, creative, running rugby. The best defense is a good offense. I wasn't letting any papers leave that store without a stable. Yeah. You, are you a rugby fan? Yep. I'll give you a hand here. Straight up to the rugby there for you. There you go. Beauty. <laughs> this will help you out real good. Good on you, Swaney. Rugby needs it. Just doing you a favour, mate. Just doing, doing the sport a favour. Yeah, beauty. Good on you, mate. Ronnie is continuing her quest to create a family fun experience with the Gold Brigade. My youngest is attending the Waratah camp and it's a great opportunity to promote the Gold Brigade and to engage with some of the parents here. We're lucky enough to have the support of Mike Doyle who works at the ARU. He's going to do some pre-game set up at, you know, at the Bledisloe for the kids, so some skills and drills and some other bits and pieces for the kids which is fantastic. I need our knees to go down towards the ground. We've got a set program that we go through from from tracking to tackle to, to ruck to maul and then and then the best thing we do is play in the afternoons and it's very casual play and, and we can we can coach them why they're playing. So we look for what we've taught them in the morning to be demonstrated on the field in the afternoon. I'm part of a fan group called the Gold Brigade and um, 
Facebook. You've heard of it? Yeah. Oh wow, how did you hear about it? It's on Facebook. Oh fantastic, that's great. So we'll join you. Look, the game at grassroots level is in a great state. Uh, there's a lots of kids playing, the game is a great game. Uh, the enjoyment that the kids get out of it is incredible. And, and to be able to create those kids to be in, in rugby for life and to become fans of rugby with something like the Gold Brigade would be absolutely fantastic. You know, we want fans of the game, we want people to support the Waratahs, we want people to support the Wallabies, because if we can, you know, if we can get good numbers to those games, the money will filter back down into development and we can have more programs. I really like Ronnie's commitment to getting school kids into the gold mine. If you want to create a loud atmosphere, that's got to be your best source. So it is a little bit different in Mossman. Six out of the, the eight boys that are here all went to Mossman Prep last year. So they've all gone to different high schools and competing high schools. Well, I think it's a good opportunity to see how many mates they can get to come sit with us in the gold mine. So who's got tickets already to the Bledders line? What would make it really fun for you guys to be there? Maybe there should be like a bus just for kids or something. Yeah, how about like the little tiles that you hold up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Makes oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tiles. Let's just say they score a try. It's like three cheers for Izzy Flower. And like, you be beret, you be beret. And then like, Izzy Flower walks on water. Tra -la 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 -la. And it goes like that. Okay, so you're going to yes. talk to your sportsmaster yeah. about spreading it around the school. Okay. So what do you guys think uh, in, in terms of how many kids do you think that you can get from the school? <laughs> you reckon 20? 200. 200. Okay. Or maybe, no, 70, I'd say. Oh, yeah, about 70 boys. I'm the same with Angus, like 100 boys. Yeah, I've got any other ideas. You know, hey, this is like grassroots, guys. We, you can be part of this, you know, groundbreaking experience, this, I guess. Like a, so 750 kids, they think that they can get to come along. So we'll see how that goes. We're in for a bit of a treat this afternoon here at a Golden Oldies Gala Day. Now, right. Swain, you don't see this in, in rugby league. No, you don't see it in many other sports, really. It's very unique to rugby, the old Golden Oldies culture. And he's hoping they actually ask us to put the boots on. Well, I think we're a chance. So wake me up when it's all over. Hold on. When I'm wiser and I'm older. Right here. All this time. All ages from 35 up can pull on the boots, and I mean all ages, with rules added to limit contact based on what colour shorts you're wearing. I'm expecting a busy day from the Ambos, but this really encapsulates the joy that comes from participation. <laughs> <laughs> you're 74 years old. Where would that put you? You're the, uh, in the higher age bracket of golden oldies? I be, should be wearing purple shorts. OK. Right, OK. Are there any older than you that were out there today? Are yeah, the oldest? I played in San Diego against some boys from Tokyo. Yep. And Fukiwaka was 92 and I couldn't catch him. <laughs> 92. 92 years old? Yes, yep, and he played golden oldies. What yeah, was his him. name? And Fukiwaka. You just made that up. That's oh, a place hey, you hey, went to I, over I, there. No, you Is that a bar in Nagasaki, Fukiwaka? Been, yeah. 92. Would well, that make him 112 years old about now? He'd be dead now. It's got to be. It's got to be, for Christ's sake. Hold on, Jerry. Rowie from the supporter group has come along to check out what these days are all about and see how he can build some of this action into the Gold Brigade. I'm loving it. A bunch of older blokes all coming together to, to celebrate a sport that they love and it's a great way to sort of connect with other groups within the rugby community. When you said it was a Golden Oldies match, I thought there might be more of like a tag where you just pull the pull the bib out of the shorts and none of that this is full contact so it's great to see here he is hey rowie hey, here he is oh, here he is yeah yeah good good How to see him mate you too you too bit of golden oldies action today absolutely yeah the gray hair rocking it <laughs> mate what about the numbers here today mate, bit of recruiting really? absolutely yeah good group yeah what about the boots mate you brought them <laughs> no. 
They're going to get you in the mix at some stage, I reckon. Really? Yeah, I can hear them cheering for oh, it now. No, no, no. They're all pass it to the young bloke. That's what they're saying. <laughs> pass it to the young bloke. Let me hit him. Sure. <laughs> I reckon, mate, the average weight out here is about 120 kilos, I reckon. <laughs> Two of you. Should we go, should we go say good day to everyone? There's yeah. plenty of people looking to shake some hands. Absolutely. Right, let's, let's do it. it. Let's get involved. For we are the brave and the bold and the bold. How'd you guys go today? Oh, we played very well. <laughs> <laughs> Rugby was the winner. I don't think we scored too many tries, but we had a good shot. We call the still billies. We actually have a still. You have a still? Yeah. As in like a... A real still. The boys went to New Zealand years ago. Yep. Took the still over and they were going to... Uh, immigration said you can't bring it in. Customs said, no, you can't. You know, it's a working still. <laughs> they said, we're here to play golden oldies rugby. So the still came in. <laughs> It's hard not to notice there seems to be a common thread surrounding the rugby. These guys are taking swigs of port before a game, as is tradition in Golden Oldies. Even our camera crew are getting a taste for the day. What's this? Our, our friends at Mudgee donated this. So What's that? There's port in there. There's port in here. I better have, have a crack at it. Yeah. <laughs> Although I reckon I had it good compared to some. What's this? Oh, it's a home specialty. Oh! <laughs> it got all the boys fired up today. Oh. <laughs> good on you, Rowie. It's good to see you joining in. For some reason, Tim had suddenly lost his fear of playing. I wish I was the same. Apparently, D.Y. have got the Will Skelton of Golden Oldies. Gold Oldies. Is that right? Yeah. The Green Noel. Noel. His name's Noel. Big Noel. He's going to be leaving the field in a stretcher today, so if Noel's got anything to do with it, you've got a big target on your back. Get big Noel Good look over you and go, put that in your top five. <laughs> it was finally our turn to get out there, and I couldn't help but feel a little concerned for Tim. Contact, mate. He'll be all right, Swain. Besides, I think he just won the meat truck. Winning ticket, black. There's the kickoff, and Shawnee straight away clobbers his own teammate. Don't worry about me, Swanee. I made up for it with this next one. Wait for it. Shot. No, it wasn't disappointing, whether it was up the middle or jumping on my back. That's another point for you in fantasy rugby, Shawnee. Come on then, mate. Show me what you've got. Wow. You're just like George Smith. Now, Rowie, just like a bit of width in defense. Yep. Did you get on the field? <laughs> Thanks, mate. Uh, there was a, a substitutional, a couple of little technical errors on the sideline. <laughs> Just help me back. Thanks, Lord Jim. Um, firstly, thanks so much for having us out here today, guys. It's my first experience seeing the Golden Oldies out there in action, so I had an awesome day. This year, we've got 3,000 seats uh, that we need to fill for the Bledisloe Cup uh, on the 16th of August. Um, what we're looking at doing is setting up a bit of a party uh, pre-game. So we're going to have a pop-up bar out at ANZ, which is going to fit 3,000 people. Um, and we thought, why not come out here today and just spread the word across your guys' networks uh, to try and get some um, to buy in from the Golden Oldies, because obviously there's a lot of passion out here. So um, I've given my information to, to Walt, um, and hopefully he can distribute that out across the, the entire network. But again, just thanks for having us here, and hopefully we'll see you in the uh, Gold Brigade come Bledisloe like Cup. Thanks very much, Timmy. Ro, a cracking afternoon out here at <laughs> Eastwood for the Golden Oldies. Mate, did you have a good time? Mate, unbelievable. I just uh, shot in some 100 proof rum, got a sheep drencher thing stuck in my mouth, gave a presentation, played some rugby. Mate, well, that was, played some rugby. that was awesome, the Prezzo. It was good. What about it? You got up there and you revved up the Gold Brigade. Yeah. yeah. Mate, did you get a few good responses afterwards? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people come up to me and say they're keen, so they'll spread it out across their networks and, you know, 20 people here, 20 people there, but, you know, that's what we need. And Australian rugby needs you, sports fans. The Gold Brigade want vocal supporters in the gold mine for Bledisloe 1. Get your tickets via facebook.com slash thegoldbrigade and click on the special link to Ticketek. 
congratulations to the Waratahs for taking out the Super Rugby title. And to the New South Wales fans as well. The atmosphere Sydney put on was spectacular. Shawnee, I don't want to preempt things, but mate, I have to say, I think rugby might be back. Tell me about it. I am already counting down the sleeps till that first letter's low. Tonight was an epic. That one is going to be off the charts. Get your tickets. Quick recycle. Straight thing there is Alabasley Cooper. He has got a double. Still a long way to go. Waratah's back in front. Slade doesn't miss them from there. Almost blocks the people to getting to their feet. With our, our supporters today, it's been absolutely awesome. I've got to tell you, I think they got us over the line because we were under some heat and when they pulled out that chant, you can see the guys left. It was really awesome. I want to thank them all. It's brilliant. This has been a production of Fox Sports.